Uh, right now joining us is Stephen Jones from the Dallas Cowboys. Stephen, how you doing today, man? Guys, doing well and uh, hard at it uh, out here and uh, trying to really help Coach McCarthy uh, put his staff together and, uh, you know, do the logistics for him. And uh, we're really uh, optimistic and fired up about our future. Now, in terms of those logistics, do you have to walk them around and tell them, like, where's the best vending machine or where the restrooms are? How does that work? <laughs> a little bit all of the above. You forget uh, when you get someone who's brand new as your head coach that uh, you got to start from scratch. you got to show them where everything is. It reminds us a little bit of moving in with uh, Coach Garrett when we moved into the star three years ago or three and a half years ago. You really had to you know, really find your way. And uh, uh, he's learning. He's a quick learner, obviously. But, uh, you know, he's not venturing out too far right now. He's so focused on taking advantage of the opportunity to get a fast start on his staff that he really wants to get that in place. And then uh, we'll start to uh, start to move into the next phase of uh, him learning his way around and that type of thing. Well, that's great, Stephen. Just make sure that it's because he's focused and not because he's afraid to ask where something is. Because I've been a new well, employee before, and sometimes I'm like, I don't know if yeah, I should ask this question yeah. or not to the boss. Well, he, he I don't think that's going to be a problem with him. He's a energetic guy and uh, a lot of confidence, and we've got a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, from Todd Williams to Will McClay, myself, uh, Laura's out there, of course, uh, our head coach's assistant, uh, all ready to uh, help him roll. Have, uh, have, we, have we determined yet what the, the rest of this coaching staff might look like, Stephen? We're making a lot of headway. Of course, I'll leave that for Mike to address when the time comes. But uh, I will say that, uh, you know, he's pleasantly surprised and pleasantly ahead of where, you know, he thought he could be at this time. Uh, uh, I think he's getting – you know, a lot of people in place quickly. And, you know, obviously he likes to start from the top down. And, uh, you know, he's a, a guy who, uh, you know, wants his coordinators to have a say in things. And I think we're real close to uh, having our uh, coordinators, if not in place. Uh, and so, obviously, then their huge help is you build the staff, you know, from offense, defense, and special teams of what their staffs beneath them look like. So, you know, it's really been a, a good orderly process. He's got a good thoughtful way about how he's going about how he wants to put his staff together. And of course, Jerry and I are very, very supportive of that and just want to help in any way we can. Do you think that uh, for two separate reasons here, one, the, the the ability to get that staff moving quickly is because of the deep roots that he has in the NFL already? And also, does, does that help with what you guys trust him in making those decisions? No question. I mean, I think anytime you've been around the league as long as he has, I think he said he got his first quality control job uh, in his late 20s. Uh, I think he's 28 to be exact. But, uh, you know, obviously been in this league a long time. And uh, uh, as, as we found out over time, we've been in it, you know, for 30 years ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's very helpful to know the ropes, uh, to have met, uh, you know, a plethora of, uh, a, a fine people over the years, great coaches, uh, being around great players who've become coaches. It's just uh, good to know the ropes, and certainly that's showing with him. Uh, certainly the other thing that shows with him is the respect he has around the league and how people are really, uh, you know, working hard to, to be on his staff. So he's got a lot of a lot of good choices, and uh, uh, I know he's working closely with uh, – you know, his future coordinators on uh, who's going to make the best staff, who's going to make, you know, what's going to be the best makeup for this particular staff. Talking with Stephen Jones right here on 105 Through the Fan. Now, you just mentioned that yourself and Jerry will do whatever you can to help Coach McCarthy along the way. I'm curious, do you ever get frustrated by the narrative that y'all or perhaps Jerry in particular are – accused by people of meddling is that a narrative that frustrates you it doesn't because you we know what happens and of course uh we've been around for a long time and you know have that confidence that we know what's going on and that's really at the end of the day all that matters i mean you know no one as y'all well know no one has thicker skin than jerry and i'd <laughs> like to hope uh that i do but uh you know we understand what's going on and i uh, understand you know that there's a lot of false perceptions out there that, uh, you know, no matter what you say, they're going to continue to persist. And, uh, you know, the people we work with, whether it was a, 
uh, a Bill Parcells, whether it was Jason Garrett, Wade Phillips, and now Mike McCarthy, they know uh, they know what we're about, and they know all we care about is you know giving them uh, resources, uh, give them the support that it takes to put the uh, put the right things in place, and uh, and and roll from there. Now, you know, every now and then, do you say, "Hey, Jason, I think it's in your best interest to maybe give up play calling." There's a lot going on with being a head coach this day and time between clock management, managing the game calling the plays, it's a lot. Now, some coaches get away with it, but, uh, you know, we'll have those type of discussions. But in general, we, you know, always tried to support uh, our head coaches and, you know, who they want and uh, what they do. Now, you know, once we invest in players and we want to obviously find guys that, uh, you know, give those players, uh, you know, the best chance to have success. But uh, most coaches believe that anyway. They look at your roster and, uh, you know, we've had long discussions uh, you know, starting the day, walked in the door with, uh, you know, you don't want to be uh, pigeonholed as a certain type of guy because the key is if you got great players on your team, you want to give them every opportunity to be great. And Mike's at the front of the line believing that. So uh, he wants to give, you know, all our players that, uh, you know, have had success in their career every opportunity to continue to have success. And you heard him in the press conference, starts with that. He wants uh, our quarterback uh to be wildly successful, and I know, uh, you know, he believes that about that. Now, I know you guys want to focus on the present and the future. I was, with that in mind, I was curious, though, was there a moment, whether it was interviewing with Mike McCarthy or any other moment along the way that you can tell our fan base about where you knew that Jason Garrett or the organization knew that Jason Garrett was not going to be the coach of this team anymore? Yeah, we had uh, open conversations with Jason, and he knew that we were obviously uh, looking, um, you know, probably to make a change. And uh, But at the same time, you know, he wasn't in any hurry, and that was his preference not for us not to be in any hurry, uh, you know, to make an announcement or move forward. And we really didn't feel the urgency as long as he understood, and we didn't want to hide anything, that we were going to be contacting coaches. Uh, not just the two we interviewed, but others uh, about uh, what their thoughts were on this job and, uh, you know, what they would be thinking about it as we decided who we were going to bring in, you know, to have official interviews. And as Jerry and I discussed, and, you know, we discussed with uh, other people in our organization, we really felt like it was in our best interest to find a head coach uh, that had had, uh, you know, deep NFL coaching experience, had success as a head coach, going to the playoff, uh, winning in the playoffs. And that's why we started, of course, with Marvin and uh, uh, Mike is, uh, you know, they had had success in this league, been to playoffs. And, you know, in Mike's case, had a lot of success in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we wanted to start with that. And then, you know, we certainly had a path that if we weren't totally at peace uh, at that point, then we could, move into, you know, maybe uh, making exceptions, whether it's a college head coach or whether it's, a, uh, you know, a, a coordinator that's on the, you know, up and coming or whatever that may entail. There were other options we looked at, but uh, we wanted to start with that. And then, of course, when Mike came in there, uh, you know, as the day went, it just became obvious that he was the right guy and the right fit for us. Since you mentioned uh, Marvin Lewis, this is not your issue to solve or the Cowboys' issue to solve, but obviously you guys carry a lot of clout in this league. What do you think that? How do you think that the NFL is doing, or is there anything that the NFL needs to do to kind of, I guess, encourage or energize the minority coaching base out there? Because there's been a lot of talk about that. Yeah, I think you can always be better. Uh, you know, I had a. You know the experience with Marvin uh, on the competition committee, to where I'd really gotten to know him, and albeit uh, you know he didn't, uh, you know he didn't get over the hump of, of winning regularly in the playoffs. Uh, you know he was a great coach for the Browns and Cincinnati, and I had nothing but total respect for the way he looked at the game uh, on the competition committee, and. I really wanted to get uh, wanted Jerry to get to know him even better. I thought he could be a, a good fit here in Dallas, but I think uh, the league continues to look for ways to improve. Obviously, uh, you know the more minorities you can get, in, uh, you know, in the coordinating positions, that's important. I know Leon Lett and Gary Brown are going out. And I think it's the East West game, and they're going to coordinate a game out there. They're trying to get 
you know, those guys experience. And, you know, in particular, uh, you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, we're on a run where offensive guys seem to be, uh, you know, the thing now in terms of hiring offensive coordinators. And we don't have, you know, good depth there as far as uh, being diverse uh, with our offensive coordinators. And I know that's something, you know, that our football people uh, at the league level, uh, at every level are looking at as to how we improve in that area. But we all want to uh, continue to strive to be better in that area. And uh, certainly we're supportive of that. Now, I, I know, Stephen, that, uh, that during the press conference, I, I really enjoyed the way that Jerry, you know, showed all the credentials of what Mike McCarthy is. And I'm, I'm wondering, because I know how much it, it, it impacted y'all's decision, because that was something you were looking for. But does how much does a resume impress players? And do you think that that matters to them, the past, the things that they've done? Oh, I do. I think skins on the wall are huge. Uh, you know, when you've got a guy in front of you who's coached teams to Super Bowls, three uh, – championship game appearances, uh, you know, those things are impressive. Uh, we all know how hard it is to win in this league. Dallas Cowboys in particular, we haven't gotten, uh, you know, uh, in 20-plus years to a championship game. We obviously have been to the Super Bowl. But, uh, you know, those things are impressive. We're very impressive to hear myself, and I, uh, it's got to be impressive to, uh, you know, to our players that uh, they do know uh, the path. And, you know, sometimes it's not always the coaches. Uh, you know, it's not all on the coach, and we understand that. We'll be the first to take, uh, you know, our, our you know our share of the our criticism for our lack of uh, appearances and in, in big games. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll wear part of that. Uh, we'll wear part of that. I know, obviously, the coach is going to players. You know, you you got to be able to take the next step to get there. Uh, organizationally, we got to do it. Uh, but I think whenever you bring someone through the doors that, that have been there and done that, I know everybody, you know, had that feel when uh, Bill Parcells came through the door. He, he had won Super Bowls. He had coached in big games. He was obviously, you know, a bigger-than-life type of personality. And, yes, he was. You know, we learned a lot from him. And uh, I think the players respected him. We didn't get it done. But, uh, you know, that's one thing Jerry always points out. Just because you get a guy like that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But uh, – uh, but Bill gave us opportunities, and uh, you know you have a few things bounce our way, and maybe uh, things would have been different there with uh, Coach Parcells as well. But uh, I think anytime you, you're able to, uh, whether you're a head coach, whether you're uh, whether you're a quarterback, whether you're a great player, if you're wearing a Super Bowl ring, uh, I think it brings a lot of respect. And uh, you know you, you look at uh, a guy like Troy Aikman, uh, you know who led us to three Super Bowls. I, I think it just, you know, brings another level of uh, of respect, and certainly that's what uh, Troy has, and you know that's something that's hard to do. There's been a lot of great quarterbacks, unfortunately, that don't get there, and some may only get there once. But uh, uh, it's a hard feat. Uh, you know, this day and time, there's a salary cap. Everybody has, and pretty much everybody spends to it. Everybody, uh, you know, 32 teams do well in this league, and they have very good coaching staffs and they have great scouting staffs and they have great facilities. So, you know, the uh, playing field's level and that makes it hard. We got Stephen Jones joining us right now on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Now the the next phase, and I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but uh, when it comes to the personnel and uh, the, the, the player personnel, uh, McCarthy talked about that this morning and he wants to know what a Cowboys player is going to look like and what their design of that's going to be and that's going to come with some of the coaching and everything, but are those discussions with McClay and what uh, McCarthy wants in a player to, to implement those kinds of guys with the draft and free agency, are those being, is that the next phase of things? Yes. And, you know, as we, <laughs> as we're doing these things, we're sitting in the room, Will, myself, Mike, Jerry, uh, you know, our, our staff, and we're already starting to talk about that. And it's, you know, it's, you know, it, it, you know, it's it's refreshing. I mean, everybody has different views of things, but uh, you know, obviously, uh, Mike and his staff are going to have influence on Will and uh, Jerry and myself in terms of uh, the type of player that uh, we're open to drafting, and uh, you know, and the type of player we're open to bringing in here. And uh, you know, it's our job to understand, uh, you know, what type of offense. Uh, uh, Mike's going to run what type of defense he, he wants and, uh, you know, what type of player we want on special teams. And, 
uh, hopefully a lot of our great players are going to fit, uh, and I think they will, they're going to fit in there. And then, uh, you know, hopefully we can, you know, continue to improve this team and draft and bring in some free agents that, uh, uh, you know, improve upon what we are and give us the best opportunity to go out there and play in these big games. And maybe take a look at some other defensive tackles too, right? Perhaps. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> certainly something that we've discussed over the years and we'll continue to, uh, let that evolve. Uh, you know, I think the word here is not just change things out. We just want to continue to involve and do uh, evolve and do what it takes to uh, ultimately get this team uh, in a position that it's going to compete to win a championship. Were, were you aware during the press conference yesterday that your mic was hot at some point and your laugh <laughs> has... Okay, so you know. You know about uh, this, right? I've been told I've been uh, I've got thick skin too, so I can take it. But uh, I've had some people give me hell about uh, my laugh. So uh, they said you laugh about everything. So uh, I guess I did, and uh, I'm guilty as charged. You, you had me hot on a mic. Here's a good comeback. The next good. time that comes up, when they say you laugh at everything, just stare right at them and be like, except for when you're around. <laughs> That's great. Well, we appreciate your time, Stephen. Thank you so much for all the time you gave us this season, and we look forward to things as we go along here, getting to the draft, getting everything going along, man. Well, we're fired up, obviously. Uh, you know, change is difficult, but at the same time, uh, hope springs eternal, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, it's got everybody with a, you know, with a little jump in them, and everybody's ready to go to work and uh, take the next step. Thank you very much, sir. Looking forward to it. Thank you, guys.